Okay, today we have Pete Neal, the candidate for Poway City Council, District 1, joining us here in the uh, John Riley Project podcast studio. Welcome, Pete. How are you? Good to be here. Okay, so tell us a little bit about your campaign. How's it going? Have you been out on the streets talking to folks in the community? What are you hearing out there? Not yet. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the new guy, mm-hmm. and I'm learning what this is all about. Uh, I went to the forum on Thursday night, and that was a new thing. But I'm just starting out. I've been in Poway since 1980, and um, I was involved in the community a lot more with the kids growing up and stuff and houses and things going on in the neighborhood in those early years of Poway being a city. Um, I was on Hill Country Drive first as a rental saved my nickels and dimes and I moved to Golden Way and that was my first owned piece of property with a VA thing and I was all set. Um, But then I moved to the Palisades, been there for the last 22 years, but this is the first time, you know, Poway is probably 90% people going back and forth to work and going out with the family and stuff. So uh, we own, we all live in our little cocoons. No, no, <laughs> and no I, question, yeah. And I fell victim to that, you know, and I'll tell you the story behind that. So this is my first run for political office. I've tried in the prior times to go for an appointed position because it didn't involve the campaign. Mm-hmm. And this last time around, I I put my appointment in again. And uh, as soon as I heard what was going on in the city council meeting, I said, no, this is is a district four. And that, I want to talk a lot about the district form of government, because this is something that Poway's needed for since we became Poway City. Yeah, I was reading your Facebook page, and you were enthusiastic about the whole districting process. Yes. I know they've been clamoring for it here in Poway. A lot of folks never felt they were truly represented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Golden Way property, I had an acre of land, okay? And (laughs) as a young 30-year-old, you have all sorts of things. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. And, oh, I've got to go check with zoning about this. And I've got to go to city council about this for permits and stuff. And I always felt blockaded. I, I... I, I got really frustrated with the whole process of trying to get something done with my property. And in the meantime, I'm refurbing the house. I mean, I'm doing repairs. It was a Navy duplex house that was uh, moved to the city of Poway after uh, the w- war was over and they were moving. Right, and sure. So my house was kind of strange <laughs> because it used to be a duplex. And what somebody had done was knock down the center wall that divided the two halves. So my bedroom, our master bedroom, was the living room for one of those. And our closet was the kitchen for the old house. Wow. So, so it was kind of a unique place to be in. And, um, yeah, I did a lot of interior work, getting the rooms all finished off and make it a, a little bit more presentable than what the Navy forced people to live in. Sure. So, yeah, that was a, that was a house was a hoot. But... How many square feet do you think it was? Uh, what was it, 1,200 square feet, maybe? F- I added on, my, my wife did uh, preschool yeah. out of the house. Yeah. She had it going on Hill Country Drive, and then, of course, when we moved to Golden Way, she she now had a yard where the kids could actually go outside and right. play. So um, we added about, f- uh, probably about five, 600 square feet to it, so it was up around, what we did was we closed a patio in the back that right. we had there sure. and, and turned that into the school. But, uh, yeah, those were good days. But frustrating with the city. So, like, give me an example. What what did you find frustrating? Well, first of all, who do you talk to? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, there was a I went, – you went to your city councilman. And the unfortunate thing was – is there's never been anybody that in South Poway that he understands the issues of property in South Poway to the grassroots level. Right. I had a VA loan. Sure. But there were limited things I had to do because one square yard of the property was within the 100-year floodplain. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. One square yard. One square yard like of an acre. three feet by three feet. <laughs> right. Okay. And the battles I had to go through 
to get people to realize that, yes, okay, one square yard <laughs> is in the floodplain, so I can't do anything with that square yard. But they, okay. they felt it applied to the entire acre. The city did. People did. People I, I, did. Look, my memory's not so good of that. All I, all I remember is the frustration. Sure. And who do I go talk to and who do I plead with? Right. And I just didn't get an audience. Really? Yeah. Did you ever just go to the, you know, the 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 city clerk's office and talk to some of the bureaucrats and administrators to get direction? Finally, the engineering department came through, but that was only on one small tangent. They wrote me a little letter that I sent to the insurance company because they were going to drop me because I was inside the floodplain. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> right? So I finally get wow. the engine. Yeah. The house is on, not on a slab, it's on a foundation. Right. And it's two feet above the ground level. And yes, the entire acre is fine, except for this one square yard in the back, in the southeast corner of it. So we finally get over that hurdle. Okay. And forgive me, is this on the Hill Country property or the Golden Way property? This is the Golden Way property. Okay. And then refresh my memory as well. Where exactly are these two streets? I know they're in... Hill Country Drive is up in... Well, I like to call it the Merton area of Tau- Poway. Merton? Or, yeah, okay. well, that's the Palmerado. Ah, okay. Poway, yeah, yeah. Merton, and Otto. Okay, okay, excuse me. Sure. The, the Mer part is for Merton, which is south of the Poway Creek, Palmerado Road. Yeah. It starts at Sule is the first street there and the mm-hmm. new housing there, and it goes all the way up to the hill till, well, we've got the old stone lodge there. Used to be the before you got into the canyon area and the Pomerado Hills, so. Wow, okay, so that's yeah. really tucked away in the yeah, corner there. Yeah, it was really tucked away. Yeah. yeah, okay. And of course, when they brought the South Poway Industrial Park in, that was one of the first things where I really got adamant because I had visions of San Diego's industrial parks being put up on this hill and coming down the side and my view and everything was just gonna be a nightmare. So I fought the South Poway Industrial Park tooth and nail. So. Right. Well, that was that was an uphill battle. But we won. Oh, you did? Tell me. Because you can't see the South Poway Industrial Park from Poway Road. It's hard to see yeah, it from Yeah, Palmerado. every once in a while you can get a glimpse of yeah. a corner of a building. A little but, corner of a building. Yeah. Right? So they get away with a little bit. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, that was the big thing was to keep it away from the city of Poway. Sure. I mean, we wanted to be, you know, from living outside of Poway... All right. We started off in Kearney Mesa, Wendy and I. When I got out of the service, you know, she gave me the ultimatum. You can be married to your submarines or you can be married to me. you got to pick one. <laughs> okay. Because I was having a good time riding submarines. See, I hope you chose wisely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I left the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very good. But I went to work for a company called Spectral Dynamics in those days. It later mm-hmm. became other names throughout the process. But... Uh, yeah, I was a customer in the Navy. I used Spectral Dynamics equipment in the Navy. So. Nice. So you understood them. You I knew understood. What they, yeah. You know what they had? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Went to work for them. Worked for them for a number of years. Number of years. Right on. Commuting back and forth down the old Pomerado Road to Kearney Mesa on my motorcycle because Wendy needed the car to transport the kids around. Well, sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. And that's when you were living on in Hill Country. That's Hill Country Drive. So that that's is that right off of Old Pomerado? Is that yeah? It, it, hmm. What's the name of that little Paquito? I think it is little little street. No houses on it. Off of Pomerado Road. Right up onto the hills, just as you get onto the new section. Which was an open field in my day. Okay, sure. And it's now yeah. Pomerado Road. Well, yeah, you've been here since 1980. You've yeah. seen a lot. Yeah. I and mean, you've seen this whole city transform itself. Right. So, okay. Right. I'm just trying to get a sense of it. I, I, I know that when I'm on Old Pomerado and I drive past the Big Stone Lodge, mm-hmm. uh, you kind of work your way up a hill and then it turns into a cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. But my guess is that, was a, that road probably went all the way through. Oh, yeah. That was but, the main road. But they had to like, you know, build Scripps Poway Parkway. Mm-hmm. And so that ended up getting, you know, kind of closed off. Right. 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 Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Hill Country Drive uh, is right in there with the issues about Matadi. Okay. Yeah. All right. If you look at Matadi, that's the southern part of the development where Hill Country Drive is located. There's buckskin up there. Tori Powers. Yeah. Up, up, yeah, up right there. on. Sure. Yeah. She lives in the same neighborhood. Okay. Very good. Yeah. 
Yeah. As a matter of fact, they have it. Hill Country Trail starts off at the end of Hill Country Drive, and then it goes around the hill, past Tory Pine, uh, Tory Parr's place, and ends up hitting the Matadi property that's in question, right? Right. That's that kind of the hillside there. Right. That's a big open piece of land, and I guess it's zoned for what one house. Probably, it, but you know, most of the, what it's zoned for is walking your dog. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's kind of. I think there's been some debate on that. You know, I've right. been listening on or watching on well, South Poway votes. It's the, it's a the other open thing that space. doesn't enter the debate is Hill Country Drive is right on the hill. Uh, it's the last de- housing development before you get to Scripps Poway Parkway, right, and all that stuff. The th- the other side of my street. Now, this is a rental. Sure. The other side of my street, the top three homes on the street of Hill Country Drive started breaking apart. <laughs> breaking Chim- apart? Chimneys were coming away from the house. Front steps were starting to droop away from the house because Poway's dirt is not stable. Ah, uh, the floodplain. Right. All right? Right. It's sand on top of sandstone and sure. river rock for the predominant part. Right, right. All right. So they, they had to, there was lawsuits involved. I mean, the, eventually the owners sold their house back to the developer because there was nothing they could do about it. Well, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what the status of those homes are now, but the history is three of them were breaking apart. So you were there from 1980 until when, roughly? 86, I okay. think. Yeah, six years, not long as a rental. Yeah. I was a I got out of the service, joined Spectral Dynamics. I was a customer service technician for three years, made it to supervisor, started running the customer service department at that point. And uh, three years after that, my mentor, Tony Keller, grabbed me and moved me into applications. So I was working on customers' applications at that point. Nice. Eventually led to what I'm, my entire engineering slash science career. Right. So. You talked a little bit about that at the uh, at the candidate forum, that right. your background is as a scientist. I'm a scientist. What That's that? what I like to claim. Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm not degreed in it. What it is, it's the University of Hard Knocks. Well, okay. yeah, sure, sure. I spent nine years in submarines. Now, this is a contained environment. People don't understand that part of it. I was 40 feet away from where I slept, from where I ate, and where I worked. And we manufactured the air we breathed. Really? Yeah. You're going to be submerged for a month. Wow. Okay. Wow. So we had equipment that took the O2 out of H2O, you know, the, the old out of the H2O, and we created our own atmosphere. So it was a, I learned a lot. I'll bet. Yeah. All right. When, you, when you're learning about how you're making the air that you're breathing, well, yeah. it's, it's nuts and bolts, let me tell you. Yeah, well, you, need to, yeah. you need to know it because yeah. your life depends on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So those were good years. And um, Spectral Dynamics taught me or gave me the exposure to a lot of different customers and a lot of different applications of our equipment. So I learned a lot that way. Mm-hmm. And then most recently, where I actually took on the title scientist, I mean, the the founder, Paul Lavoie, asked me, he says, well, what do you call yourself? I says, I want to be the chief scientist. Right on. (laughs) (laughs) And he says, why that? I says, I've always wanted to be a scientist, and this is my chance. Right on. You know. So, uh, yeah, Jan Medical was founded pretty much that weekend, you know. <laughs> okay. So. Like, I got a bobblehead here of Albert Einstein. I got to get one of you now. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that category. <laughs> Look, it, it's got to really hit you in the face for sure. me to get involved in it. Right, <laughs> right on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that was, you know, Hill Country Drive and the start of my activity was fighting the industrial park, pointing out to them that you got problems building here. Right. Okay. Um, we don't want to see it. <laughs> right, sure. That was the sure, other thing. Sure, And I think they did a very good job. As a matter of fact, Jan Medical, I, I established an office up in the South Poway District. Nice. You know, business park for a while there. Good. So, yeah. So it's a good place to work. It I mean, is. It's close. I have a client that's up there, and so I'm, I'm up there a couple of days a week. And, 
Yeah, it's it's a really nice business park, and you're right. It is kind of offset, so it's mm-hmm. not visible. And uh, you know, hey, it's a great property tax base for the city. I'm sure yeah. they're making some yeah. extra bucks off of that. And, you know, good for them. There's a lot more that can be done in that area too. Oh yeah, no yeah. doubt. They're building up there too. There's they are a building all the time. There's a new big tilt up, you know, industrial warehouse like a couple doors down from my client. So yeah, mm-hmm. there's yeah. there's activity there. It's by no means done. No. Yeah. And I think on the the most southern part. I, you know, it's almost Scripps Ranch. Right. There's a lot of open space over there. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll see how that develops. I, I'm just wondering if one day we're going to have a road that connects us to the 52. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, I'm just looking way into the future. Yeah. The I wouldn't 52, be at all surprised. Yeah. Well, you know, I re- like I when I, I my wife and I we moved to Poway in 1996 mm-hmm. and we lived on Garden Road. Oh yeah. Okay, way on the end in Sycamore Creek. Um. And and when we moved there, we I was curious about the you know the 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 town and and the layout. And at the time, there that 125 freeway was going to go right through um, yep. you know the Sycamore Canyon and through Garden Road, and it was going to connect with Espola. Um And and it would have eventually, I think, led to a connection to the 56, but it certainly was going to connect to the 52. Right. Um, and then of course. That now that's off the table. Now it's off the table. Well, for now. For now. <laughs> but that would have had to gone through the military base too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, and, and the old General Dynamics property that they're still messing around with, you know. So, yeah. 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 So yeah, who knows what's going to happen in the future? My, when I was out there living on Garden Row, my next door neighbor always told me. He said, someday. Poway is going to be like near the hub of San Diego County mm-hmm. because there are going to be a lot more development east of Poway. At some point, they're going to have to build out there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, interesting. Yeah, I mean, that's way into the future. Right. But it's an interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to know that you lived on uh, garden, the Garden Road area because I can now tell you exactly where Golden Way is. You know the turnoff you make for Garden Road? Yeah. By Poway Valley Collision. Right. Okay. Well, you notice there's a little driveway entrance just before you make that turn. It yes. It goes into a the storage building now. Yes. I used to be Golden Way. Yeah. To get to Golden Way, you have to turn before that where the car wash is, go across the field behind the storage area, and then make the turn in front of what used to be my property. Yeah. It's now Poway Valley Collision's work building. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that was the other thing. I, I was residential property in those days, all right? And every time I went through the city council to try to do something, I want to get building permits, I want to put this building here, I want to put this shed here, I want to do this and do that. And the other thing, well, you're commercially influenced. Yeah, I got a, the town in, towing impound lot was next door to me. Right. Three o'clock in the morning. Uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> All the, the repo was, guys. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Sullivan was towing some you know, wreck in there at yeah. 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And then there was the repair business and then the um, VFW, the, the American Navy Marine Corps Club there. Yeah, yeah. And they had parties. But yeah. that was sort of a balance. That kept me in balance because over on Hill Country Drive— I had the country western music from the Big Stone Lodge right, right. <laughs> on Friday and Saturday nights, sure. keeping the kids up. But then when we moved to Golden Way, I had that place that would play country western. Right right on. Okay, good. So I've always had that balance of country western. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We, that's Poway right there, huh? Till I moved to the Palisades, and now you can hear. No, you can't. You can hear the train. When they blow their whistle, you can hear the Poway train. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. And. When the wind's just perfect, you can hear I-15. Yeah, yeah. But I it's got to be perfect. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you're you were saying you're kind of near the you know the Candy Cane Lane community. I'm right? ground zero for Candy Cane Lanes. <laughs> Is that a good or a bad thing to live there? I really enjoy it because it's the one time of the year where my neighborhood is the way I wished Poway was. It, well, how, explain that. What do you mean? When I go out my front door, there are people walking around and looking at the Christmas tree lights and listening to the music and conversing with one another. I mean, the first few years, people would drive around in their cars. Right. But they're not getting the full impact of that light show that (laughs) our neighbors put on. Okay. 
And and we look, we passed ludicrous about ten years ago as far as the <laughs> right. lighting. I mean, yeah, I had yeah. to put a solar system in to power the damn thing. But um, yeah, it's from sunset till nine o'clock, ten o'clock at night. You can go out and have a conversation with dozens and dozens of people. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it's it? It's a great thing. Yeah, you know, but it's one month out of the year, right? The rest of the year, I mean, I'll wave to my neighbor as I drive by or as they drive by, you know. They drive, don't drive by. I'm at the end of a cul de the right. cul-de-sac, Butterwood Court. Sure. Of the three cul-de-sacs that make up the original candy cane lanes, Butterwood is the middle one. Okay. So, so when I say I'm ground zero for candy, <laughs> I'm at the end of the cul-de-sac of the middle cul-de-sac. Right. I mean, so, you're in the thick of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's a hoot. Yes, we have 24 boxes of Christmas lights. And yes, my electric bill probably triples for the month of December and January. But it's a hoot. It's well worth the investment. Nice, nice. Because that's the time when you can talk to people. So th this is an interesting point because, you know, we've been in Poway, my family, since 96. So what is that, 22 years? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, people cocoon in their homes or they cocoon in their neighborhoods, right, right? Right. And sometimes, you know, it's not like, you know, a Norman Rockwell painting, you know, where you go out and right. you meet everybody, you know. Right. Um, but it, it put this in the context of what they're doing um, with the Poway Road development. And, you know, they're talking about building a lot of high density housing, right? You know, it's gonna be commercial and uh, residential, and it's gonna be, I don't know if they're going to be apartments or condos, at least in that first phase that they're building. In a more densely populated community, you're probably going to have a lot more interaction with others. You know, there's probably going to be a little more walk into the store, you know, that sort of thing. Maybe. We, maybe. Okay, that's fair. But it's, it's interesting when you think about what they're planning for Poway Road. There's a lot of upside on certain levels, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of... I know certainly the city's anxious for more revenue. Um, you know, there's a, there's a potential for getting more business, more places to, to more businesses to to visit restaurants, and potentially more housing to make it easier to live here. Mm -hmm. But on the downside, it's more congested, it's more crowded, there's more traffic. You know, mm -hmm. and that and that's you know, it's a pro and con, right? Yep. I mean, yep. how do you feel about that whole project? Uh, I'm still collecting a lot of input. Mm -hmm. This is based off of. Um, let me explain that a little bit. People ask me, says, okay, what's your agenda? <laughs> what are you going to work on? And and what I say is, I don't have an agenda. I, I, I don't have a script for me entering into city council because I've got a lot of experience, all right? I want to hear what your issues are. I, this, right is, this is what district representation is all about, Okay. Whereas before, with the at large, you got to speak for the whole city, right? All right, you got to keep keep in mind everything as a whole. Whereas I can concentrate my issues on the people in District One, in my case, okay, where I can collect their input, come up with a plan, make their agenda the agenda of District One. Now, when you do say that, I'm going to have a border with District Four. Probably so let, right. let's let's go over this just for our, mm -hmm. our viewers. District one, where mm -hmm. you where you live, my understanding is it's bordered by Community on the east, mm -hmm. Poway Road on the south, correct. Twin Peaks on the north, for the most part. There's more to it, yeah. Yeah, and then it goes as west as Poway goes. Right, but there's also a little peninsula of District one that goes on both sides of. Uh, Pomerado Road up to Pomerado Hospital. Right, right. And, and, that I, and that I'm going to be sharing with the district. Well, I'd, District 3 is, mm -hmm. my, is the next one. Remember, it's this election is District 1 and 3. Right. 2020, it's 2 and 4. Right. So we've got to be able to hit the ground running in 2020. No doubt. We're adjusting the districts. I'm pretty sure that I, they did it as best they could. If you look at the plan 133, which is what the city council approved for the district boundaries, yeah, it's, it's a good start. 
But there's some adjustments. That yeah, I think made. they agree they're going to have to make an adjustment with yeah. the, the new census. and Right. You know, so that's reasonable. Yeah. They based all the numbers off of the last census when we had 47,000. We're actually at 50,000. Right. Okay. There's 3,000 people. Well, I looked at the numbers and I said, those 3,000 people, that's since 19, 20 years is 3,000 people moved into Poway. And the thing, the first issue that hits me on the head is everybody said, oh, all the people, all the developers, they want 3,000 people. And I said, yeah, I hear you. Because it took us 20 years to move 3,000 people into Poway, and now they want to do it in four to six. Right. That's a huge ramp. That's a hockey stick on the population oh, yeah. curve. No question. You know. But also don't forget that in 1980, to the time we reached 47,000, that's a hockey stick. I mean, the population skyrocketed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, my home now was built in 89. Mm -hmm. My home in Sycamore Creek was also built in 89. Yep. Um, so, yeah, there was a tremendous amount of development since yep. 1980. Which I fought. I fought the Palisades. <laughs> and now you live there. <laughs> I'm back there in the middle of it. Yeah. What kind of a hypocrite is this guy? <laughs> well, you know, I don't claim, I don't think you're a hypocrite. I think you're just playing the game as it exists. Well, here, here's what it was. Um, my wife got very frustrated with my tinkering with Golden Way and my frustration. I was coming home angry. I was coming home frustrated. I had an acre of land that I had to mow every weekend. And I couldn't spend time with the kids because I had this property to take care of. And when all she's done, she says, we're done. We're going somewhere else, you know. So I conceded, yeah, it's time to move on. It changes good sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, it was funny. When we were out looking at the houses, right, I'd walk into the place, ah, this is really cool. But if I moved that wall and she'd turn around and walk out, you know. And they'll go to the next house. I said, oh, great view. You know, we ought to bust this wall down, put some windows in, get the view. She'd turn around and walk out. So this is the scientist in you. Right? You're trying to conform your environment <laughs> to fit your ideal yeah. condition. Yeah. So I right? said, Wendy, what is it? Why do you keep walking out? She says, I'm moving into a house that's done. You're not going to screw yeah. with it. <laughs> so one thing I've learned, you know, in, gosh, what is it? 22, no, 24 years of marriage. Mm -hmm. For a wife, their home is their nest. Yeah. They say for a man, it's a castle. For the woman, it's a nest. Yeah. And they just want to have it their way. And I totally respect that. Yeah. You know, so when my wife wants certain things in the house, we typically work to strive to get there. Right. And if they don't want anything done, they want a turnkey solution. Mm -hmm. That's well, a good idea, too. You know, when I moved to the Palisades, it did. Uh, for the downside of my involvement in Poway, okay, I wasn't tinkering around the house. Well, what did I do? I took on more work responsibility. Right. I moved into sales. I moved into being the Western Regional Sales Manager, which covered from the Mississippi River to the Ural Mountains. <laughs> you know, that was my sales territory. So, yeah, I was averaging 52,000 miles a year. Wow. In the air, traveling and visiting customers. So was I in touch with what was going on in Poway? No, no. 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 I was moving. And three kids are growing up. All right. I did get involved in Pop Warner. I mean, I learned, I met a guy there, Joe Lucia. I learned a lot from Joe Lucia in Pop right. Warner football. Learned a lot about city of Poway that way too. Sure. Talking with the parents getting volunteers to show up to paint the field up at Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Early on a Saturday morning, get the field ready for oh, yeah, yeah. The kids playing football. And, of course, with the mighty might level of football, I mean, they were more interested in the butterflies sure. yeah. <laughs> than they were football. But it was fun. That's fun. That's, That's fun. good stuff. Yeah, the Lucia family has been in Poway for a while. I know yeah. some of them were used to play, um, had children that played in Poway National Little League. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if there's multiple families or brothers or it's something like that. Yeah. And then um, one of the Lucias is a, like an investment guy on the yeah. radio. That's, a, that's his son. Ray yeah. Lucia, I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 That's his son. Right on. Nice. We didn't see much of him. He was always off getting his business started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it <laughs> seems like he's doing pretty well for himself. That's, for that's good all for right him. now, yeah. 
Nice. Yeah. So, and I'm trying to remember the other guy that was involved there. He uh, rehabilitated the building uh, in the middle of the park there. What was his name? Damn, I can't remember it off the top of my head. But he had a nice little restaurant, and that's where the kids used to go after Pop Warner practice was to that little restaurant. Okay. Um, God. Where was it located? Huh? Where was it? Right in the middle of the old Poway Park now. Well, the hamburger factory? Hamburger factory. Yeah. What was his name? Phil Spear. No, no, no. Before Phil Spear. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. He owns the property up on the uh, east end of town. His wife runs the horse tables up there. Oh, the equestrian, like up the yeah. hill on, a, on yeah. uh, Poway Road? Yeah. yeah Great I, guy. Uh, Supported Pop Warner. I mean, we had a good time in right the first on. I mean, the, the parents would go in and have something, to, and, the, and there was a whole bunch of uh, um, games that could be played. This is pro video games. <laughs> yeah, they were over there playing the games, and we'd be sitting there eating hamburgers. So you have three children. Yeah. And they were all raised here, Poway. And they, what schools did they go to here in town? Valley School, all right. Twin Peaks, Poway High. Right on. And how old are they now? Oh, I can't say. They're she, she's my oldest is Timber, and she's sensitive about. That. Okay, okay. Well, they're grown adults. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jess, Jesse, he's sensitive about it. Nick, my youngest, well, he's yeah. He just gave me my uh, grandson Eli, two years old now. Very nice. I think you I, you may have seen my post this morning. Yeah, I, I was did. So proud. There's my mom. Right. Hundred years old. She's 100. 100. Well, 100.66, if you must know. <laughs> Not that anyone's <laughs> counting. Okay. And I saw it. You know, yeah. It was your mother and your grandchild. So that's her great-grandchild. Yeah. And it was a 100-year difference. 100 years between them. Wow. And where does your mother live? She's in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how many grandchildren do you have? Um, just the three. I have Charlie and Maddie, and then Eli is the youngest. Okay. So Charlie and Maddie, they are... Frustratingly, they are close by, but they're not Poway. Okay. My kids can't move into Poway. Another frustration. Well, because it's so expensive. It's too expensive for starting up families. Right. Well, I mean, that's a problem everywhere. In California, yeah. San Diego, Poway, housing's expensive. Yes, it is. There's huge demand and very little supply. It was the same fear I had when I moved into Hill Country Drive, and I looked at these homes up in Poway, and I said, I'm never going to be able to afford this. I'm never going to be able to afford these houses, you know. But it's amazing what you can do. You know, you put your mind to it. Oh, yeah. Good hard work, and things fall into place. So I never, I, I moved into Golden Way. Yes, I said, oh, my God, what a horrendous mortgage. I'm <laughs> never going to be able to pay this off. Right. 115000 <laughs> for an acre in Poway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Where are those prices today? Oh, yeah. They're, really, <laughs> they're in the history books. Yeah. That's where yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's time to um, time to focus on district representation. And finally, after 1980 to now, we're going to have people that people can go talk to. And I welcome that. You know, I, I, I'm an imposing figure. I'm 6'4", and up until recently, I was coming close to 300 pounds. I'm back down. <laughs> now I lean <laughs> get, and mean? Get, I'm getting better at Okay, it. right I'm, on. I'm getting rid of some of the weight. But I'm an imposing person, and I didn't realize that. All right. So um, I like to engage people, but I found out that I have an intimidating presence. Well, you're a big guy. Yeah. 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 So... The long hair, I'm just the old hippie. That's all right. <laughs> Come on up and talk. You know? Okay. I'm completely disarming my, my position. And it ha Stater Brothers, you know, Walmart, Bonds, you know, you engage in conversation. It's just in passing, but you hear things. Sure. And then at Christmas time, I get an earful. <laughs> oh, well, because everyone's walking everyone's by your there. house. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that it's interesting is uh, when we first moved here, um, you know, the, there was a group called the South Poway Residents Association, mm -hmm. and, and they were very vocal, you know, because they didn't feel they were represented because they look at the city council and most of them lived in North Poway or for lack of a better term, Central Poway, mm -hmm. right? There were no representatives that were South of Poway Road. And then that organization kind of went away. Um, yeah, and then it sort of comes back up, and now it's the South Poway group, and there's been different personalities that have been in that group. Mm -hmm. 
I've always felt, because at the time I lived in South Poway, mm-hmm. um, and I, I thought they were right. I mean, they didn't have representation, and they had unique issues because of the, you know, the, the property and the, the home values in that area, the, the quality of the schools, and mm-hmm. you know, they had some legitimate issues. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased that there are district voting right now. Mm-hmm. I'm, I guess I'm in district three. Mm-hmm. I'm like right on the edge. Um, but it was, the whole thing was interesting because, you know, there was that lawsuit that you better go into districts or you're going to get, you're going to have to pay, right? Because mm-hmm. they knew they were going to lose. And originally they wanted, it was all motivated by having certain, I guess, ethnic groups having proper representation. Mm-hmm. But in Poway, you know, it's, it's not exactly an ethnically diverse city. So I guess that was kind of hard to draw those lines. But at minimum, at least it's drawn geographically mm-hmm. into zones. And I think that's a good thing. Actually, they did a pretty good job. If you look at the demographics of the city of Poway, it worked out pretty well. Um, what you say is true. I'm not, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to pick you apart or anything. Sure. Like that. The, the, they did a pretty good job. But there's going to be some fine tuning required. Oh, yeah. And well, I'm I'm hoping to have that. Look, we got we'll have two years between this year, this election, and 2020. Right. I'm hoping that I can get that massage properly, so that when 2020 does come around, we can hit the ground running with full four representatives for the entire town. Right. And so yeah, because there'll be two more district elections in 2020. And the, the whole at-large situation, that will go away. Mm-hmm. And so it'll be four districts plus a mayor. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they'll do the census in 2020 and then, what, redraw the lines for 2022 maybe? I think it's easily – they're projecting the numbers. I mean, right now, when I look at the numbers that Google search gives me, and there's a number of sources out there that have projected what the population really is right now in Poway. It's right around 50,000. I mean, give or take a couple of hundred on which source you would deal with. Right. But it's very close. I mean, there hasn't been a massive development in Poway. We've had, well, there's a few over here in District 1 that are, are now selling. There were three or four homes built up onto the west of Pomerado. There. Right. I went and talked to them, you know. Uh, talked to the neighbors there, and they said, oh, yeah, we had to put up with rocks and gravel coming down the street for a year and you know, this stuff. And that's and District 1. That's yeah. District 1. Yeah, that's that little uh, tentacle that kind of yeah. goes up north. Yeah, yeah, right on. When I looked at my first week, I said, I said okay, I'm responsible for all, Those are all churches up there. I mean, right. I, well, who's going to vote for me there? You know? Right. <laughs> but as it turns out, there's, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting neighborhood is if you – if you, I don't know how do you explain this, but if you're at the intersection of Twin Peaks and Pomerado mm-hmm. and you go north on Pomerado mm-hmm. and the first left turn you make, there's a development there and then you can go up the hill. Yep. And then you're up there and there's like power lines, but it's like a mesa up there. And yep. these people have some really nice homes. Yep. And I guess it's sort of in between Pomerado Road and Rancho Bernardo High School. Right. Yeah. So that's a little tucked away zone there. Yeah. But they should have a voice. They should be heard. Yeah, they should. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's a, I mean, all due respect to the people that live there, it's kind of a forgotten area, right? It is. Yeah. It is. That makes sense. So, yeah, I think the talk district. To, talk to Tori about that. I mean, she lived a little bit further south when she was growing up, but she can remember walking up in the fields there to the west. You know, Van Dam Peak, it's very near and dear to her. Right. She, she spent her childhood going up in those hills. Sure. You know, just as my kids got. And the South Poway, you know, where the industrial park was, yeah. So what's uh, what's really driving you to run? I mean, why this election? Why not? I'm excited and, about districts. Okay. I owe it to the city of Poway. I've been here 38 years. This town, this town has been very good to me. Right on. Okay. All right. I've I've grown my capability. I've gone from a, a sailor, you know. I'm not going to go say a 32nd Street sailor. I was Point Loma sailor, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. I was a submarine service. So mm-hmm. I'm a different notch. And sure, people sure. take issue with that. Sure. <laughs> well, that's fair. Yeah, that's all right. But I was a sailor. But out of the Navy, came here. Wendy and I, we were started off in Pacific Beach. Nice. That was our first place. But we found out we got really depressed there in Pacific Beach. Really? Night and morning low clouds. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. You wake up in the morning, yeah. you go into work or school or whatever. 
It's overcast. There's no sun. No. You get out of work at the end of the day, it's overcast. No sun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get out. We got to go see the sun. So we moved to Kearney Mesa. And then we listened to what was going on in the community and stuff. And uh, Poway got my attention when they said, we're going to separate ourselves from San Diego. We're yeah. going to stop this, you know, monstrous growth and stuff like this. And I'd say, I want to move there. So did you get to know any of the founders of Poway? No. no. You know, Bob Emery or well, Bruce Tarzi, those guys? Yeah, I, I knew them. And uh, yes, I, but we were not chummy. I understand. That's fair. <laughs> there were other issues in my path. Okay, you know? okay. sure. Well, you were, you know, flying 50,000 miles a year and yeah, you, you yeah, were at yeah. Pop Warner Fields. And what do you think of the uh, Poway General Plan? <clears throat> I'm going to hold off on that, just like I'm holding off on my personal views of the Poway Ro uh, Road Corridor sure. specific plan. Okay, I'm still collecting input. Fair. The general plan falls into that same category. All right. It's. I'll quote somebody who's running in that story. There's too much emphasis on development. Mm -hmm. All right. People were not listened to, or it was poo-pooed. So, and that's because we had at-large people trying to represent the entire city all at once, mm -hmm. in four different viewpoints, all trying to do the same thing at the same time. That right. seems a little chaotic to me when you got people with three diff four different agendas trying to come up with a plan. If we have the representation where, yes, I've got the entire city in mind, but in order for me to be successful in District 1, District 3, District 4, District 2, we've got to work together, but we've each got our own focal points. Yeah, well, as you should, and yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. And, you know, Poway is a lot different than it was in 1980. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, the, in the my opinion is the general plan was probably the best decision they could make at the time. Mm -hmm. And the founders had a vision for Poway, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But here we are almost 40 years later. I think it's fair to revisit it. Yeah. You know, and, and let's confirm it, or um, maybe it is still the right plan, or maybe it's not. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'm going to discuss it for a minute or two. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You go as far as you want to go. If you look at Midland Road intersection with Poway Road, and go east. That was supposed to be automotive. All the car dealerships were mm. supposed to be down that end of town. Okay? Right. The economy went bad. We lost our Chevrolet dealership. That was like in the early 2000s, right? Yeah. Yeah. 2008, you know. Yeah, yeah. GM, GM was getting bailed out. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. That put a huge hole in the plans for that end of town being an automotive plan. Right. We got a Lowe's. <laughs> right. Okay. All right. Lowe's is not in direct competition with Home Depot because they're up in the industrial park. Well, what's wrong with that? It's okay. It was supposed to be automotive. You take the center of town from Midland Road to, I go Carriage Road. Right. Okay. Community being the intersection of the, of the town center. All right. Well, that, that's not quite working the way they originally laid out the plan either. No. Because it's been opportunity driven. You know, right. So, and I understand that. And we've also got huge spots of property on Poway Road owned by people, and it's flat territory. You mean it just there used to be a bank there? It's oh, yeah. It's now a level lot. It's like across the street from the McDonald's. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, the Poway Road specific plan, Poway Road corridor, all right? Like it's, it's a hallway or something. It's not a hallway. <laughs> it's our main road. <laughs> yeah, folks, right. You know, I don't want it to be a specific plan. I want it to be a guide. That's right. You said that at the, uh, at the yeah. candidate forum. Yeah. It should be a guide. It should be a goal. If we build it exactly the way that's written out with these three-story structures on both sides of the road, I might as well go to another town. It's not Poway. Poway is, well, 
my friend Rudy Wolf, it was Rancho Ford. It's now Perry Ford, but it was Rancho Ford in the day. And he had an advertisement in the early 80s when I moved here. He says, come to Poway where the turf meets the dirt. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that line. Dave loves that expression. Yeah. He said, damn, I'm going to write that down. But it's yeah. true. It used to be on the air. Right. I, at first, I thought it was humiliating. But damn it, he's right. No, but it, it, there's 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 character in that. There's character. Yeah, that's that's good. This was Poway was a stage stop, right? <laughs> all right, that's where it all started from. People had farms out here. I'm on Golden Way. When I couldn't build anything, I said, "All right, well, I'll turn it into a garden. I'll grow stuff back here." Right. All right. So I started out there with a pickaxe, and I'm digging holes and trying to get a field going back there. Get a rototiller going. Grape vine irrigation system all over that property. I said, that's what they used to grow here was grapes. This used to be a vineyard. Interesting. All right. Where's that mentioned? All right. Well, I can show you where the irrigation lines were. They went all the way up to the well. I had a well three and a half feet in diameter. So were you able to- Water 15 feet down. Were you able to like bring all that back to life? Sure was. So you got a well going. Did you grow grapes out of no, a vineyard? No, I didn't go that far. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is this is when work got in the way. I had all these little projects that I got started, and then work got in the way. Yeah, I'm the king of starting projects <laughs> and never finishing them. <laughs> Nothing so, good done. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you yeah. loud and clear on that. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting too. Like the, the Poway General Plan came up with this whole, you know, Stone Ridge issue. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, are they going to be able to build there or not? And it was zoned not for residential housing, it was, you know, for a golf course. Mm-hmm. But the Poway General Plan prevented that development. So I know some people were happy with that decision and mm-hmm. some people weren't. Uh, but, you know, as the city grows and as the city, you know, evolves, mm-hmm. the Poway General Plan either guides us or sometimes it blocks us. Mm-hmm. And I guess it just depends on your perspective. Right. Um, but you kind of wonder if our founders, you know, from 1980, if we transported them to 2018, what their opinion would be, you know? I, I know exactly what one of our Tarzi is, what of them. Yeah, what would he say? Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you have any pictures there are of him sitting up there? <laughs> <laughs> like the thinker, right? <laughs> yeah. This didn't go according to plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's tricky, you know, and, and the auto dealers are interesting, too, because they, they, they have a lot of power in town because they bring in so much sales tax revenue. Yep. And I know they tried to get um, Perry Ford to go east of Midland and Perry Ford said, no, nah. yep. you know, and then they eventually let them do that big remodel. Mm-hmm. So they ain't going nowhere they're now. They're not going anywhere for a and, while. And then it also seemed like and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this is accurate or not, but they they went really high, and I know that there's like a height ordinance on Poway Road, mm-hmm. and I was always wondering if they made a waiver for Perry Ford or if that was just within the the spec. I don't know, but yeah, they carry a lot of clout. Yeah, they do. And when we lost the Chevrolet dealer, I'm sure the city took a punch in the nose on that, you know, with the loss of sales tax revenue. So yeah, and one hasn't come back. No, I, for Calypso, I had to go all the way down to Bob Stall to get a car. Bob Stahl, Chevrolet, and where is that? La Mesa. La Mesa. But that's all right. I got friends in La Mesa, so okay. the, their park got built. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about Calypso. Yeah. And, and, and you brought the model here I with you. I brought the model of Calypso. And I saw your car out front. I mean, this is an insane, beautiful Corvette. This is something that, you, keep in mind, this is something you do after the kids have grown. Okay, <laughs> don't try to do this when the kids are growing. Right. Okay, because it is a huge obsession. At least it's turned that way to me. Yeah. So, yeah, after the kids were grown up, I needed something to occupy my, my time, and I went to Calypso. Uh, the timing was right. The engineering was right. So and tell us more about Calypso. What year is it? What so modifications? 2014, it's, okay. uh, 2014 was the first year for the C7. Prior to that, I had a C5, and prior to that, I had a C4. I've been a Corvette guy since I was 50 years old. Nice. Okay. Um, but they were all bottom breathers. All of the intake, all of your cooling, all of the stuff comes from underneath and driving down Poway Road or across the desert, you're dealing with preheated air that's this this high. You know? Right. When they came up with the C7, 80% of my engine heat goes right out the top of the hood. Nice. Right the top of the car. 
these are inlets on either side, transmission and differential. So ah. They, they have solved. I, like I say, it took Chevrolet 63 years to figure out how to build a car. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's an obsession too much, but, uh, yeah. So is this a car you like? Is this the car you drive regularly, or is this just every day? Some, every you, day? You'll find it in Stater Brothers parking lot, nice. Bond parking lot, and please, if you see me, pull over and let's talk. Yeah, well, I mean, I saw the car out front. It looks it's very similar to the color of, of the model here. It's an exact duplicate. It is a beautiful. Now you told me out front what calypso means. So can you uh, share that again. It comes from the uh, Greek mythology. Uh, calypso was the goddess that lured sailors to their death. <laughs> and so this and car this, this car is luring me to my death okay it will be the last car i own on i'm pretty sure oh yeah it's it's beautiful i mean i had no reason in the world to sell the c5 the c5 turned out to be the most reliable car i'd ever owned it really was it was magical but when they came up with all the engineering changes they came up with on the c7 i said ah. so the, the cooling being one of them right major one yeah i was, I was a convertible guy right all right if you go to the convertible C7, all these vents are back underneath. Ah. Okay, so I had to go, oh, I gotta go with the coupe. Ah, but the roof panel comes off. I'm good. So that's a T top, right? Is yeah. that the right well, term for it? It's, it's, a, it's a coupe where the, remo- the whole roof comes up. It, remember, the old Corvettes used to have a center bar, so it was literally a T shape. Sh- sure. Yeah, not anymore. It's the whole thing's gone. Nice. So. <laughs> that's a sweet ride, man. I, I like it. Yeah. Now, and, look. I've lived in California on and off since 69, permanently since 78, okay. But I'd never done Highway 1. Nice. Highway 1 up the coast is a wonderful ride. Yeah, it's awesome. Poway should take some notes on some of those communities, the way they're laid out. I mean, yeah, they got the ocean. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) That's a big plus. Sure. Right. But it's really an exquisite ride. I, I, I was... Very impressed. So you you just recently went up to Laguna Seca. Last weekend. Last weekend. So you got to check. It was Corvette racing, right? Yeah. Were it's they all a... vets racing or is it? <laughs> no, no. It's it's the IMSA race series. Uh, I first got involved to Laguna Seca. My sister was married to a Navy guy, an officer in the Navy, and he was going to the Monterey postgraduate school. I was 15 years old. My parents <laughs> had no tolerance for a 15-year-old boy, so they said, You're going to go spend a couple of months with your sister in California. I said, okay, cool. Yeah, right on. Put me on a plane, sent me out there, and one of the places we visited was Laguna Seca Racetrack, and I got infected with sports cars. Beautiful. All right. So in my single years, I had Austin Healy's, I had MG's, I I was European sports cars. And uh, then after the Navy, as you know, I had wife and three kids and vans. Well, and a motorcycle, right? Yeah, my motorcycle, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but that was back and forth to work. Yeah. Back and forth to school. Right. You know. Yeah. So GI you, Bill. Oh, the GI Bill is awesome. Yeah. yeah good yeah, for you. Yeah. Well, I had nine years in the service, and so I had, actually it worked out, so I had 10 years of entitlement for the GI Bill. And Very I'm going good. to school, and the BA advisor says, you know, um, you're, you're rapidly approaching a, your degree here. And you still got six, seven years of entitlement. I said, yeah. He said, well, once you get a degree, it stops. Right. I said, oh. I said, what do I do? <laughs> you know, I, I need that income. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And they said, well, change your major. Ah. Declare a new major. So <laughs> I did that for, <laughs> for the 10 years. I kept changing my major every time I got close to it. I'd switch over to another major. So, yeah. Degreed in nothing. Okay. <laughs> but educated in a lot of different things. Well, that's good. One of them is your thing, television production. Oh, well, I don't know if I'm a TV producer. <laughs> I'm a guy with a podcast that could transform his that living is, room into something. But isn't that the new thing? Oh, it is, yeah. It is. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It's a hoot. So you drove up Highway 1. Yep. And, you know, they just they rebuilt part of it. I know there was that big mudslide. Yeah, and, and I just put my YouTube, my trip... And I, I made sure on my YouTube video of the trip up Highway 1, I said, i got to get this. Because this is California's 250 feet of new coastline. Yeah. As opposed to the six miles that Hawaii just got. Right. Well, yeah. Right. right. You want to listen to a mayor? 
you got to listen to the YouTube video of the city council meeting where the mayor of that town that is now 40 feet under lava, listen to him speak. The whole town. The whole town. Is, is now under in, lava. Yeah. So it's just this crusty. It's gone. The city is gone. Six, wow. 670 some homes gone. So I, I guess he's not the mayor of anything anymore. So, <laughs> nope. But the people still own the property. It's just 40 feet higher than it used to be. <laughs> Think of that. Well, well, what I, an impact. I wonder if you can get insurance for that. I mean, <laughs> no, no. Not no, if you no. live on a volcano, that's I guess. That's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. But yeah, the California coast was impressive. The new section, is they've done a spectacular job. Uh, the Caltrans people are there 24 hours a day. They're watching it very close. Well, yeah. Because there was a secondary slippage during the construction. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it, And you can see it. As you're driving along, you'll see the secondary slippage. But it's only been open, like, for a couple of months, I think, right? End of July. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, that's what changed my mind. I was, when I was going to go back to Virginia to visit my mom, I was going to do the Virginia International Raceway that same weekend, all right? But when they made the announcement that Highways 1 is going to be open all the way, I said, oh, oh you got to do IR. I'm yeah. going to Laguna yeah. Seca instead. That's yeah. an easy decision. Yeah. 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 So yeah. I was looking on your Facebook page, and I know that you did the Route 66 drive as well. Yes. So tell us about that. Let me tell you an interesting part of that, okay? In my business life, I've traveled to all the major cities along I mean, I've been to Oklahoma City. I've been to St. Louis. I've been to Chicago. I, Yeah, Albuquerque, yes. In my business, but you always have another agenda when you're doing business travel. Oh, of course. Yeah, right. always. Making sales. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> okay. But I'd, I'd never done Route 66 as a contiguous trip. Now, you remember, I'm a teenager in the 60s. There was a TV show called Route 66. And they had a Corvette. Two guys in a Corvette. Yeah. All right. So this is, yeah, I got to do this. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I found out where the beginning of Route 66 was, and I did the whole thing all the way to the Santa Monica Pier. In a Corvette? In the in Calypso. In Calypso. Right. Beautiful. Right. So when, when, when was it? So this? my sister asked me, this is probably a year after the trip, okay? My sister asked me, she says, so what's, what was memorable about your Route 66? You, you keep, you've done videos on it. You keep talking about it. You know, you, what was the one thing that you did on that trip that left this impression on you? And I said, the people you get to meet along the way. Nice. Yeah, right on. I mean, I'm in a brand new Corvette. I'm pulling in roadside rest stops, right? I'm trying to make a beeline to the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> sure, right? sure. And somebody comes up and starts engaging me in conversation because it's a new car. Oh, well, yeah. They can't help but talk yeah. to you in that car. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I'm sitting there with my legs crossed. I've I really got to go. <laughs> you know, can, can you wait and I'll talk to you on yeah, the way out? Yeah, yeah. When you're traveling, I understand. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, that's what it was, was the overall experience of talking to the people. And I... I stopped in and visited old Navy friends along the way. Nice. You know, and old friends from high school that are sprinkled here and there all over the country. So, How much time did you take to take the whole trip? Yeah, about five to eight days somewhere. Yeah, so you can kind of go at a comfortable pace. Well, see, the other thing was <laughs> I wanted – I had a list of people who were going to drive with me. When I originally started to plan the Route 66, I was going to have a passenger the whole way. Different passengers, but passengers. But I got diagnosed with lymphoma just before the trip. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all gone. Good, good. <laughs> oh, okay, right on. Good. At least I now know what the word remission means. Okay, good. Because I can't find it, so that's fine. Good. <laughs> you know. So I was dealing with that because I had a lot of thinking to do. Mm. You know. I'm sure. Um, so there was a quiet time on the trip where I... Miles passed underneath Calypso, and I thought about who I was and where I was going and what I was doing and what my future was going to be, if I was going to have a future. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it was sobering, but a very good trip. Right on. Yeah, I, I'm a, I like a road great trips. country. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you got to see everything. Yeah. At ground level. Yes, at ground level, not, you know, yeah, 30,000 feet in the air. You know how many times I've crossed this country in an aircraft? And oh, yeah. out the window saying, there's people working hard down there. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. 
most people don't get a chance to say hello. Yeah. So you got to go through. That's fantastic. I, speaking for myself, I know that I like road trips for that very reason, is mm-hmm. that you can think. You know, you can just kind of take a moment to make the whole rest of the world kind of hit the pause button, mm-hmm. and you can just be alone and you can think. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very, it's good therapy, you yeah. know? It's good stuff. Well, this Laguna Seca trip, my best friend since, I always say, since we were two. <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, we were friends since we were four or five. My dad ran the church, St. Luke's Parish in in, Link, in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And my dad, he liked to preach the sermons. He was communicating with the people of the church. Right on. And the infants in the church were a distraction. So one of the first things he did was, let's have a Sunday school. All right. So... That's how I met Gary, was at Sunday school in St. Luke's. He was, we were four-year-olds together, but we were, had been going to the church since we were two together, you know. And he now lives up in Diamond Bar. So I said, Gary, let's go to Laguna Seca. He said, sure. So we took off for the weekend. Two, two uh, <laughs> five-year-olds in a, in a Corvette going, that, to a, going to a race. I, mean, I like that. That's <laughs> awesome. And that was last weekend? Last weekend. Okay. Yeah. So you're back. You enjoyed the trip. And yep. you posted something that was like a crash in the race. Or I... Yeah. It, it was disappointing. I mean, you, you go there for the competition. Yeah. There, there's three different classes of cars that are racing simultaneously. So the, there's one class, the prototypes. Then there's the GT Le Mans LM, which is yeah. the Corvette compete in, along with the GT, four GTs, and the Porsches, and the BMWs are in that class. And those are factory-sponsored cars in that GTLM class. Right. Then in the GT uh, D class, named after Daytona, GT Daytona class, those are the people who have, uh, there's no Corvettes in that class, but the Porsches and the BMWs, but they're not factory-sponsored. They're individual race teams. Okay. okay, right. Now, the way this works out is, the prototypes are the fastest cars on the track. The GTLMs are the next fastest, and then the GTDs are the slowest. And they put them in that order as they start off. So eventually, about two laps into it, everybody's passing each other. It adds, uh, it, it adds that extra dimension of one-way traffic. Right, that right, right. It right. makes it competitive. Yeah. Okay. I enjoy it. I, I'm, I'm a road racing kind of guy. I'm not a drag racing guy. Right. Okay. I like road races. I'm always... Driving down the road thinking, Apogee Apex, Apogee Apex, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, oncoming traffic, get out of my way, hey, Apogee Apex. <laughs> so that's the way I look. But yeah. what happened on this in the in the wreck was just as they were approaching the starting line, everybody's trying to come up to speed so they can hit the starting line at speed. Right. And one guy didn't see, one guy wasn't going fast enough, so he went out and it turned into a big wreck. Ah. Uh. And what happened was the Ford GT that's a contender to the Chevy for the season was one of the cars that got taken out. And one of the Porsches got hit, and they were a contender for the points for the season. And so they were gone. So the Corvette team says, uh, competition just went away. So they went into conservative mode. Oh, like a prevent defense. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And so I said to Gary, I said, well— we were going to stay to the end of the race, but this is going to be our yawner. Yeah, you that's know. too bad. But so, you at least had a great trip, so that's a that's great. Trip. Good. And I made it home by eleven o'clock Sunday night. So you made it home just in time to start your campaign back up again, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Good. Yeah, good. So um, let's take it back to Poway. Just yeah. a couple of things. What's your thoughts on the um, the recent appointment process that we had for city council after Jim Cunningham retired? Right. Um, I applied for the position, and as I said, I stood there in the, in, in the room, and I, I got to speak first. Oh, you were the first one. I okay, you broke the ice. Yeah. I got up there, and I spoke, and then I said, all right, on my way back, I, I ended actually 20 seconds beforehand. I had said what I wanted to say with 20 seconds to spare. Okay. And uh, Steve says, well, you got 20 seconds. I said, no, oh, bank it. <laughs> I'll use it at some other time. And right, right. Everybody got a chuckle out of it. But as I sat there and I listened, 
Um, it was, and I knew that district was going to be going that way. But there were some real District 4 issues. And I sat there and I thought, hmm. So District is, 4 issues, you mean South Poway South issues? South Poway issues. I right. Mean, these, there was a lot. The Matati Lane thing was just <laughs> right. exploding at right, that particular right, point right. in time. And I'm saying, boy, I said, I'm in District 1. I said, they, this is a two or three months, you know, between now and November. They need some urgent care. Right, right. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to narrow the field, pull myself out. I'm a District 1. Sure. All right. Let's narrow the field so the people that can be considered are District 4 people. Because this is a firestorm. All oh, right. yeah. Yeah. All right. So at the end, when everybody spoke, I'd made my mind up, but and I, I says, can I have my 20 seconds? I, I'm, I'm going to withdraw. So oh, you said it right there at, yeah. the, at the same time when everyone made their pitch. Yeah. Okay. So I withdrew. Okay. All right. I, I'm out of it. And I left. All right. <laughs> I, 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 did, I don't need to hear anything more. This is, this is your problem. This is, you solve it. Okay. And um, next day I find out what had transpired. And I said, wow, I'm not sure that was the right move, you know. And the stuff, stuff that's happening, I'm still having that same feeling. This is probably not the right move. Yeah, it, it was a controversial decision. Yeah. I mean, you know, the person that was appointed, you know, has a great background in government affairs, no doubt about that, yep. but is uh, new to Poway. He only, had, only lived here for three months, yeah. and then she was appointed. And so, yeah, you know, I, I've heard both sides of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, the, Mayor Voss explained to me the rationale because mm -hmm. they wanted to bring someone up to speed quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't want to burden city staff with training. But on the other hand, I thought a lot of people felt that they weren't getting the representation that they felt they had been demanding for decades. You know, so. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. You're a Garden Road guy. Yeah. All right. Maybe not now, but you were. You yeah. get the Garden Road. Sure. There's something about heart. All right. When you live someplace and you go back and forth to work and you're going back and forth to the store and you see the same people and you're waving to them and stuff, I mean, there's a certain immersion that gets into your skin. It becomes a part of you. It takes time to develop. You know, it really does. And people say, well, you got no experience in government. You've never been a politician before. You're not putting any money in your campaign. I said, no, nah, it shouldn't be that way. You know, I'm here to give my time. Tell me what your issues are. I'll do the job. Well, I mean, running for city council, I can't imagine people would expect you to have a lot of, you know, political experience. I mean, it's kind of, you know, gr the ground floor. But you can, bond, if, if you're after personal development issues towards a field of politics, you get involved in the different committees, the Poway Road specific plan, you yeah. get experience at the, at, the, at the individual, and then you put it on a resume. Right. All right. I don't do that. I don't have any, I, I didn't invest 160, 200 hours into a plan with my blood and sweat that I want to push down other people's throats. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit back. You bring me the plan. Give me your arguments. All right? It's a scientific process. Give me the reasons why this is a good thing to do or a bad thing to do, depending on your side. All right? I'm going to go with what the people tell me to do. It's right. that simple. Right. I mean, it's not complicated. Mm -hmm. But if I have a personal involvement in it, there's no way I can't help but bring that baggage with me. Right. It becomes my agenda. Right. I don't have an agenda. It shouldn't count. So you, you're, you're ultimately just want to rationally evaluate all the proposals that come forth yep. and make what you believe is the right decision. And, and I'll study the issues. I'm a scientist. Remember, give me a challenge. Of course. Right? Sure. I'm going to dig into it on right. my own. You mm -hmm. give me the arguments. You give me the plan. You do you do that part. You're the person that's got it invested. Right. you got your heart into this, one way or the other. Right. Tell me what it is. And I'm going to do a sanity check on what you tell me. All right? Does this make sense? Right. All right? They're going to put a building in with two floors of parking underneath between Poway Creek 
and Rattlesnake Creek. Have they done the studies yet? <laughs> you commented on that at the candidate forum because yeah. it's, it's supposed to be two, st two stories underground for this parking garage for the development that's you know, right next door to Five Guys, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of across the street from yeah. the car wash. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if they go down two stories, I don't know, what is that, 25 feet down or something like that? You, are they gonna hit water? That's what you're concerned that's, with, right? That's the first thing. Where's the EIR? Well, you would think that they would have done that, right? You'd think. Yeah. I haven't seen anything about it. I haven't heard anybody saying, this is not a concern because we're gonna do this. Right. Bring me that, bring me that information. Sure. Right. Well, my, my hunch is, is that it's been done. It just hasn't necessarily been shared. Yeah. But I would imagine if you ask the right people the questions, the Have information. Have you driven up Carriage Road in the Palisades after a rainstorm? No. Take that trip. Carriage Road. From Poway Road, go into the, you know, Starridge Park. After a rain, drive up the hill. Wait for the rain to have gone away. All okay. Right? So we have relatively dry pavement. Take a look at what's coming out of the road on Carriage Road. Like coming up from the asphalt? I mean, through the asphalt. Every crack in that road, water seeps out after every rainstorm. Really? <laughs> So there's a lot of activity under there's the ground. There's activity in the ground yeah. in Poway. People don't understand that. Right. Yes, you can go in and do an EIR study. They can do it right now. We've been in a haven't had rain <laughs> in two years, essentially. More or less, yeah. Yeah. All right. When do they do their EIR study? Did they do it at the wettest time we've ever done? They've done it to the driest time. Yeah. That's a fair point. Um, you know. One would assume they're scientists that do the work properly, but again, I don't know the detail. Yeah. But do they you, know that they had rocks on a polar road that they were going to have to go through to get the new pathway and stuff through? They figured that one out as they were going. Yeah. They, ran, they stubbed their toes on that one, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like, we, when was it when we got the huge rains here in Powell? It was about two years ago, right? That was one of them. Yeah, it was like major the one floods. one I remember really well was when I was on Golden Way. Wendy's father was not in the best of hell, so she and the kids got on a plane and went back to the East Coast. I was in the house by myself, and we had some really bad rains, really bad rains. And I'll never forget when I went to flush the toilet. It went around in a circle and didn't go anywhere. Oh, no. I thought, that's weird. That's that's supposed to go down. <laughs> I wonder. I'm on a septic tank. My septic tank was full. Oh. My backyard had eight inches of water in it. Oh man! Remember the hundred year floodplain? Right. That I fought like hell. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they weren't wrong. I got eight inches of water up the foundation of my house. My septic tank's underwater. How long did that take to clear out? Two weeks. Wow. So you didn't have any, you know, sewage working for two weeks. I went to work a lot. <laughs> go, go to restaurants, you know. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Wow. This, you know, Poway is Pagway, Indian. Right. Where the valley ends. I believe Mary Shepherdson will probably correct me on that, but I think I think I've got it right. I think Poway means where the valley ends, and if you look at it, this is where the valley ends. Well, why is valley sandstone? Hmm. That's when the ice age was here, and that, that's what it left behind. Why have we got river rock down all over our hills? That's what the ice was. It's geologically that's the way it is. Right. That's what we're stuck with. Indeed, and and uh, yeah, yeah, right on. And like you, you, your old house on uh, on Golden Way, you had what the the one yard of one square yard of <laughs> yeah. the floodplain. So you well, know guess it. what? Back back in the eighties, we, <laughs> we had a rainfall that got my attention. So what do you think about the competitors in your race? I know there's John. Great guys. I Carson. Love Dave. Dave's the incumbent. Dave. Yeah. Dave Grush, John Ryan, John yeah. Carson. Yeah. They're the th they're three you're running against. All good guys. Yeah. Like Dave, he just doesn't 
doesn't do so things the way I would do them. Oh, of course. You guys are different people, and you have different, yep. you know, different principles that guide you. I voted for Dave. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. 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 But um, they're all good people. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. They're yeah. All, they're all doing what they want to do. Right on. All right. Um, I just want to do it my way. Right. Which is to let the people talk. And I'm amazed at how much that's starting to come into the conversation. All my competitors are saying, we want to hear from you. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, let's go back a few weeks. I'm the first one that said, give me your agenda. Well, you, you have a strategic advantage because you're on Candy Cane Lane and all the people come by your house. <laughs> After so, November 6th. <laughs> yeah. So, the, I mean, I was assuming you're elected, you yeah. know, you could actually, you could truly listen because you're going to have do all thousands time. of people coming by your home. Absolutely. And don't you think I'm going to let people know it? Right. I'll, Wendy will come up with some sort of decoration that'll let everybody know. Pete's here. <laughs> <laughs> now, no fair. Christmas Eve, granted, uh, there's a Santa Claus that frequents the neighborhood on Christmas Eve. Right. Um, I'm not saying anything special about that. Oh, but. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Nice. So, what so, else do you want to talk about? I don't know. I think we've covered a lot of ground. You know, we got to know more about you, your mm -hmm. family. Your, Can I come back? Your history. Of course. If Absolutely. I think of something, I'll, of course. <laughs> I'm going to call you. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I've, I've mentioned this on, on the other podcasts I've done. There's an open invitation for any candidate, mm -hmm. whether running for Poway City Council, Poway School, School Board. Uh, if you want to come back, there's some something that's you know got you excited. Something you want to talk about? Let's let's get it, it together. It's inevitable that I'm going to sit back and I'm going to listen to this video. <laughs> right. I'm going to pay attention to everything I say. Sure. I'm going to say, damn it, I didn't get that point across. Oh yeah, you can't always get it perfect. You know, I want to go back and I want to clarify that point. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm thinking about this morning. Um, I sat down and, and did a video on um, the analysis of the corkscrew turn at Laguna Seca from my three laps that I did. Okay. Okay. But I'm looking at it from a scientific point of view now. Mm. All right. How do, you, how, how do you negotiate this particular turn? All right. So I laid it out. Put it all together, edit it all together, it's stuff you're going to be going through, you know, get this and that and all edited together, you get it laid out and get it burned, put it up on YouTube. Damn, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. got to come down, I got to redo yeah. that. Right, right. And I think I said apogee instead of apex. I meant apex. And I <laughs> that happens all the time, you yeah, know? Yeah. You yeah. listen, I've listened to people being interviewed and they say the wrong word, but you know the word they really meant to say, mm -hmm. but just in the the nerves and the of the of, of the situation, people sometimes misspeak. I, I've don't don't worry about it. I think the, the beauty of this discussion, it's not necessarily the words you're saying specifically. It's people are getting to know you. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'm hoping that this podcast brings about is to let people get to know the candidates, understand what makes them tick, what mm -hmm. drives them, what they're what they're all about. Mm -hmm. Because you get, you know, a 30-second clip at a, um, at a debate forum. You know, you got a few Facebook posts. Did you, know. you see the guy that was holding the signs up at the forum? No. Was he in the back of the room? No, he was right first row. Oh, yeah. Well, he was the, the time guy. Yeah. Yeah, and he's pretty hardcore. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> he got my attention. I said, oh, yeah. wrap it up. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. wrapped up. I'm sat down. Yeah, they run a tight <laughs> ship, you know. So the Poway Democratic Club, you got to tip a hat to them. I the Green them. Valley Civics Association is going to be the same way. It I will think. be, but it's, I'll tell you, it's going to be a tighter format because they also have all the school board candidates, or oh, at least yeah. the ones in they're, this area. They're breaking it up into different groups, though. I, yeah, it's like the first hour is... I don't know if it's this. I don't know if the school board goes first or second, yeah. but I think it's one hour for city council, one hour for school yeah. board, um, and the, I guess maybe it might work out okay because well, are they going to have all the candidates or just the ones from North Poway since it's Green Valley Civic Association? It's, all, it's everybody. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you're going to have less time than you had at the debate forum yeah, last week. You had an hour and a half. Yeah. Because yeah. they've got to cram everybody into an hour so they have space for all the school board candidates. Yeah, I hope all my friends that live up in North Poway will come see that one. They didn't show up for the South Poway one. I don't know why, but they didn't. 
hopefully there's more. Are there any others scheduled besides those two? No, I heard that South Poway Votes was trying to put one together, but they could, they need sponsorship to, to, to do it. And I've even thought, you know, what's wrong with me just putting a thing on Facebook about, hey, I'm going to be in Star Ridge Park Saturday from yeah. 2 to 3. I'll come over and talk. But then you contacted me. I said, ah, oh, that would be great. Yeah, Podcast. that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Mayor Voss does the deal at uh, the Hamburger Factory where he sets up shop like Sunday mornings, I don't know, or Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. and has coffee. That's another angle. Yeah. And just advertise that you're there. Um, but I think, yeah, the more you have an opportunity to speak to people, the more they get to know you as a mm -hmm. person rather than, you know, a name on a ballot or a, a sign or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, let's see, is there anything else I want to hit that you did not ask me about? Well, I think we hit the high points. I think we did. Pete, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. And uh, tonight I'll get this edited and hopefully I can get it posted this evening and then you can well, sit let back let and create me, let me review it for no, no, no. <laughs> this is unedited Pete thank you very much All right. okay